Today is Monday. Oh shoot. Oh, we gotta get the book. Yeah, happy Monday. It's eat what you want day. What do you want to eat today? Salsa! <laughs> Salvador Dali was born Ooh. today. Should we make gaff tape Dali mustaches? <laughs> My name is Alexandria. This is Michael. And today we're making salsa. Welcome to the full measure. Welcome to our show. If you haven't seen the show before, we like to make a recipe two different ways. The first way we make it is very simple and probably the way that a lot of people make it at home, but we add a little bit to it and we call that the half measure. <laughs> the second way we make the dish is a little more involved or a little more complicated and we call that the full measure. <laughs> Why are they both babies? I don't know. <laughs> And at the end of the episode, we let you know whether it was worth the time and the effort to make the full measure recipe. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Let's talk about uh, salsa, chips and salsa. One of our favorite and guiltiest snacks. Some, sometimes it's a meal before a meal. The half measure recipe today will be actually just salsa in a can or a jar that a lot of people buy at the grocery store and we'll show you how to make that a little bit better than normal. The second recipe will be like, I hate to call it from scratch because it's like, it's so simple. It's, I think that that's a, a misnomer for something that is, takes almost no time to put together. Fresh tomatoes, fresh ingredients, fresh everything, um, fresh cilantro, fresh lime, and then we'll try them head to head. I mean, obviously we both prefer the fresh salsa, but if you had to guess, do you think that there's a way that I could make the one out of the jar something that we both would like? Yes. Yeah. Because I do feel like it wouldn't take much. I think it is that like, fresh ingredient. It's funny that you say that because that's exactly what we're gonna do. I would like to start by saying the no measure version of this is just to buy quality salsa at the store. Grocery stores almost always carry smaller brands now and there are some really good salsas available. I wanted a real challenge today so I picked up a jar of Pace. This stuff is probably my least favorite grocery store salsa and if I can make this taste better, then it would work on just about anything better than this. The idea I'm trying is to add one fresh ingredient to the jar of salsa to bring it back to life just a little bit, but we will try it with a few variables to see which pays off best. My goal here was to make this as simple as possible because any more work than this and you could just make your own salsa. Starting with the onion, cut in half, peel, and then use a box grater to grate the onion. About half an onion would be good for a full jar. Just mix it in. Next, the garlic. Peel one or two cloves and use a garlic press or finely mince the garlic before mixing it directly into the salsa. Cilantro, one of my favorites, can be cut up and placed right on top or mixed in. And finally, lime juice. You can usually get about four tablespoons of lime juice from one lime. We should only need about half of that. Squeeze with a press or by hand and mix into your salt. We tried each one of these as an individual experiment, let's call it. Trying to improve, how do I put this politely? Salsa the most in need of improvement? Let's see which one was our favorite. These are, this is actually, this is paste. This is paste? Yeah, it's paste. Tastes like paste. Yum. <laughs> it's a little bit better. Let's try. I think the garlic is probably gonna be my favorite. Oh yeah. That kind of brings. It's in there. It takes that pie note away. Yeah. Which is nice. Well, and it makes it feel like it actually tastes like. This sounds really insulting, but like it tastes like food now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it doesn't have that like chemical as what much. A, what a jump. Right. And all I did was like, I crushed a clove of garlic. Uh, cilantro. cilantro. Just make sure you get a little piece on there. Mm. No, it's barely there. Yeah, you don't really, it's still yeah. very pacey. Yeah, it's, it's like a chemical, lime juice. Makes it bright. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Yeah. I mean, hands down the garlic though, right? That one's my favorite. I hate saying that it tastes like real food, but it like kind of has but it a- It tastes more like salsa. Mm -hmm. Paste by itself doesn't really taste like salsa. I wanted to take what I thought was a salsa that needed the most help that I really wouldn't normally buy. I probably still wouldn't buy this because there's so many really great salsas, but the theory for me was if I can make this taste decent, then imagine what that would do to pretty much any other store-bought jarred salsa. Yeah. Um, so those are the half measure recipes. Let's make some salsa. The first of two full measure salsas we will be making is Bon Appetit's roasted salsa. All of these veggies are gonna get a nice roast under the broiler before we salsa-ify them. 
Cut two pounds of Roma tomatoes in half, hamburger style. Peel one medium onion and cut into quarter inch planks. Everything is going onto a foil lined baking sheet. Also add three serrano chilies and three cloves of unpeeled garlic. Pack everything tightly together on the sheet. Place this whole affair under a broiler for about 10 to 15 minutes, turning the peppers and onions about halfway through. If anything is getting too roasty, simply pull it off the sheet. We're just looking to char the outside of all of these veggies. After everything is done in the broiler tanning bed, chop your onions and peppers. The degree to which you chop them will help determine how chunky or smooth your salsa is. I like pretty chunky, so I left these pieces a little hefty. Next, peel your garlic and add it to the bowl of a food processor with half of your roasted tomatoes and puree them together until completely smooth. Add the other half of the tomatoes and pulse until you reach a chunkiness that you like. Again, I'm going with chunky. Pour into a medium bowl and add two tablespoons of lime juice, about a quarter of a cup of chopped cilantro, all of the onions and peppers, and kosher salt to taste. Give this a mix and taste for seasoning. This is ready to serve as is, or you can chill it for a few hours. I recommend the latter because all of the components need to get to know each other to be at peak deliciousness. You could also skip the entire roasting portion and just blend everything together in the food processor. It makes a very good fresh salsa. Salsa Verde more your speed? Try this recipe out. It's really good in the summer because of how bright it is and it also makes a wonderful pork marinade. Start by peeling the husks off of your tomatillos. They should pull right off and twist the stem out as you finish. They will be a little sticky from the husk, but this washes off with the rinse in the sink. The nice part about tomatillos is you don't have to peel or cook them, just quarter them up. Next, rough chop one medium onion, two serrano peppers, and one jalapeno. I'm gonna roll the dice and leave all the seeds and all my peppers. I don't mind if this turns out a little spicy. If you don't like spicy, just remove all of the seeds. Gloves would be a smart precaution when cutting your peppers, unless you want chili oils all over your hands and then later all over your camera. Add the tomatillos, peppers, and onions to the bowl of a food processor, along with a half a cup of chopped cilantro, two tablespoons of lime juice, one tablespoon of honey or agave, and a hefty pinch of kosher salt. Give everything a little whirl, and then begin to add water a little bit at a time until you reach your desired consistency. I like my salsa verde a little on the thin side, but you can do whatever you want here. Finally, as is with all cooking, taste for seasoning. Might need just a little more lime and another little pinch of salt. One last little spin in the food processor, and then into a medium bowl. It's ready to serve as is, but a couple hours in the fridge will do this a lot of good. If you're following along, you now have two incredibly delicious and incredibly fresh tasting salsas. Fresh salsa is very, very simple. And in the summers, when all of these ingredients are at their peaks, there's not much better. Chips are about the only thing you need to complete this meal. That's right, it's a meal. We may not want to admit it, but we've all eaten an entire meal's worth of chips and salsa at some point. Let's find out which one Alexandria likes more. Oh, is that the one you want? Yeah. Why do you want that one? Because it's green. Just because it's green? Let's try the salsa beard eye first. Mm-hmm. If that's what the one you want. It smells good. It's spicy. I kind of wanted to see. Yikes. Yeah. I'm just a small white person. I mean, it's not awful. Oh, yeah. It's super, like, bright. Ooh. Very bright. It's so good. Yeah. It's a good, like, that's a good summer. Chip dip. This would be a great marinade for like pork or Ooh, ha, chi- yeah, yeah, yeah. chicken or something. It's super bright and very clean. Yeah, it's very summery. That's nice. Yeah. I've already tried this. I'm okay. very I'm very excited to have you try it. This is Bon Appetit's charred tomato salsa. Ooh. Oh, it's like salsa and a little bit more. For people that don't really like spicy salsa, that's probably like their good limit. It's a good mix though. Limit. There's a little yeah, bit of spice there, in there. Well, there's heat to it without it being too spicy. It's just like deeper. Yeah. And I think it just It's not from... just like the tomato and onion mm-hmm. and lime. It's very balanced. The charm brings a lot of sweetness out of the onion and the vegetables. Like it makes them like that roasty sweet vegetable flavor a little bit. And then it also has that like the charred bits in there too. So you can kind of taste that like charcoal-y. Yeah, the, like burnt, that. Like, but in a good way. Mm-hmm. I was a little wary to make it because I've had charred salsas in the past that are just like, it's too just, just like charred. This, it's pretty mild. And that's a little on me, like I pulled them out kind of a little early because I didn't want them to be like overly charred because I really like that fresh, bright tomato flavor and I didn't want that to go away. But I also have this What's that? fresh salsa, no, n- nothing cooked. Like this is just tomatoes, onions, cilantro, lime. Okay, yeah, this has, you can tell this has like depth. It does. From the char. I actually prefer this. 
You like that brightness? Yeah, I like the brightness and I like the like acidity that's kind of missing from that charred one a little bit. They're just totally different. They're very, very different. These are nearly the same ingredients, ingredients like almost the same proportions of everything and they taste so different. Yeah. We're just yeah. eating salsa now, we need to stop. Mm. Ooh, that verde is good. It's so good. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, it's bright and, and tart. Yeah. Yeah, I don't feel like this was too long. This is pretty quick, especially for like, this makes a huge amount of. You're basically just like chopping everything up and then. Just put it in the blender. Smashing it. Smashing it. <laughs> and it makes a ton. Like look how much salsa that is. Yeah. That's a ton. You'll have some for your party and then some for yourself. Secret, secret nighttime salsa. One for me, one for the bucket. Yeah. The secret nighttime salsa. This is our chart of worthiness, where we measure how much effort goes into a dish versus how much payoff you get. Buying really good jarred salsa is as easy as it gets, and if you buy a good quality one, the sky's the limit. Altering a very mediocre salsa was almost no work, and it did improve it a little bit. Making salsa with fresh ingredients at home is very delicious. And you also get the added benefit of being able to put in any ingredients you'd like. This one's a no-brainer for me. It's 100% worth it to go the full measure for salsa. Well, I think, I think that's enough of talking about these bowls of juice. Okay. You were just waiting for me to give you the go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching this video. We have a few other episodes if you want to check out our channel. Leave us a comment down below if you have a recipe or a suggestion of a dish that you'd like us to try. We definitely uh, enjoy seeing those. If you make any of the recipes from the show, make sure you tag us on Instagram and Twitter. You can also find us on Facebook. As of today, we have also launched a Patreon, which you can find more information about in the description. Or you can go to our website to find all of this information. All of those links, of course, I will put in the description below the video. Again, thank you very much for watching. We appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You can eat whatever you want. <laughs>